Hey guys, what's well, that time of year again? We hit spring, the time has changed, so now it's gonna stay a lot later in the evenings and we'll have a lot more time to do videos, so stay tuned. We're gonna have a lot, you guys are gonna see a lot more of me uploading here lately, but today we've got a little project we gotta work on. I have never actually done an official review on my mower over here, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you guys look at it. This is new to, my new to me mower anyway. I actually bought this used. I got, I feel like a pretty good deal on it, but it is a, I want to say it was a, I can't remember now. It's either a 2012 or a 2014, somewhere in there. Husqvarna. This is the model number up here. Uh, it's RZ 4824F. But what we're doing today, since it's springtime and it's about at the right mileage, you can see, or I'm sorry, not mileage, but hours. Uh, there we go. You can see we're at over 200 hours on it. This thing calls for an oil change after the break-in period every 200 hours. Or if you wanna do it at the beginning of every spring, it's not a bad idea either. So this particular model has the Kawasaki motor. You can see it's the FR730V. So there's a lot of different models of the Kawasaki motor that this will apply to. Uh, probably even the same oil filter. But just always cross-reference, make sure it is gonna fit for you. But I'm gonna show you the exact process on how to do this. So in case you're somebody that wants to do something like this yourself and save some money, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it so you can save yourself a little bit of money and you'll know how to in the future. So first thing we need to start off with is what exactly you're gonna to need to get the job done. I've got an oil catch pan here. You can see it's pretty gross. I may clean off the top before we get started here. I've got oil filters and I actually have, I'm gonna leave a link for you guys below. This is the model number and I'll leave this on Amazon. But guys, I got six of these actual Kawasaki, genuine Kawasaki oil filters for this mower. And it was 40 bucks for six of them, which that's just a little over six and a half bucks a filter. I looked these up um, at some of the box stores, Home Depot, and it was like 12 or 13 bucks just for one of these. So if this is gonna be a, a you know, something that you're gonna use, keep for quite a while, go ahead and save you some money, buy these in bulk. It saved me quite a bit of money. So like I say, if you guys like the video, do check out the link. It does help support the channel some so we can continue doing videos like this. But nonetheless, so we've got the oil catch pan. We've got the oil filters. You just need one really though. We've got some shop towels in case we make a mess. Um, I've got a socket set. And, and in my particular case, I've also got a pair of channel locks because mine is just a little bit different than um, what I've seen some others. And then here we've got the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some people are going to get me in the comments. They're going to say you shouldn't mix different oils. Guys, I don't think that there's really an issue with it. I've never, I've never had a problem doing that. Um, but for our particular application, we've got some 10W30 here. You're going to need, if you're doing an oil filter change with this, then you are going to need 2.2 quarts total. So you can see I've got two quarts here and this was an old leftover jug that I had that looks like it's got <laughs> just enough for our application here, honestly. So we're gonna go through all this here, but 2.2 quarts of oil. Um, and then like I said, socket set, channel locks. And that should be everything that you need to go ahead and complete this. So let's get started. Okay, first thing that we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna fire this mower up and I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. The reason I do that is it helps, helps get the oil moving so it'll drain a little bit quicker or rather it should since it'll thin out just a little bit. But also I just like the idea of it kind of mixing all the oil up that way if there's anything that might be suspended in there, you're draining out some of the crud and it just helps me feel better anyway. And the manual says you're supposed to do that. So we're gonna fire this thing up for two, three minutes. Not too long, but just to get it a little bit warm. I don't wanna get this thing so hot that it's gonna burn us. Make sure you got good ventilation. I'll probably open these shop doors so we don't, uh, so we don't run out of oxygen. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is you are going to need An oil filter wrench and I've got a couple of them here because I've got different applications I got to use them on but one of these will probably work I like these personally because you can just slide them right over the oil filter and then twist it off wherever you need to go so don't forget that too but let's go ahead and let's get this fi thing fired up I'll let it run for just a few and I'll clean the top of this off okay so the mowers ran for just a minute or two here like I say I don't want to get it so hot that it's going to burn us whenever we try to do something first thing we're going to want to do 
Uh, make the oil drain a little bit faster. I'm going to take the oil dipstick here. I'm just gonna unscrew the cap on it. That way we can get air flowing in there. And then what we're gonna do is you're going to take the oil drain bolt out. So what I've seen, if you come over where the gas fills on the right hand side, if you look under where the tire in between the guard is, you're gonna see back here, you can see this line that's coming out of here. It looks like some actually have a drain bolt that's right here that you can undo. And then the oil, I guess, will just drain out through this hole right here. But it looks like maybe somebody put an adapter on this guy to where you can see, like I said, that would normally be the drain bolt where you undo this. And just like on a vehicle or something, oil would start flowing out and probably come through the little vent, the little slit there. But somebody has run a tube right to the back here to make it a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you guys in my tripod we're gonna see if we can get this thing out of here and see if we can get the oil to drain into our pan. So whatever you're doing, you just wanna be mindful. Make sure that wherever that oil's gonna come out of, that you've got your pan under there ready to catch it. Well, as luck would have it, I don't have quite the right socket for this guy right here, but we can improvise a little bit. If I can find what the size of the socket is to unscrew this, I will uh, put it in the description for you guys. But well, let's take a crescent wrench and we can improvise here. So, I'll take my channel lock, see if I can get a good grip on the back here of the stem somehow. Just like that, where I can bite down on it, adjust my wrench to the right size, turn it to the left, and I should start draining. And like I say, be mindful if you ran this thing. It might be hot. So you can see I've got it pretty loose now. So I'm gonna try to position, scoot you guys back, position this well to where, be careful, it's gonna flow out as soon as you take this off. So you may wanna try to be quick whenever you notice it's at its end. Just like that, that wasn't too bad. If you're doing a vehicle, It'll come out a lot quicker than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my channel locks off. We're just gonna let this thing drain for a bit. Now I'm going to set this right here so I don't forget where it is. So I'm gonna let this drain out for a few and I'll come back whenever it's done. Okay, we have pretty well come to a halt as far as oil dripping out of there. Um, while that was doing, it's thing I was going out and playing with my pickup a little bit so it did take a little while to drain so go take you a little break eat you some lunch or something then come back as soon as it's done draining and now we can actually get to the oil filter itself so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that oil filter wrench this guy right here and I'm gonna wrap it around the oil filter itself so if you want to use a wrench you can use a wrench they also make those kinds that actually fit on the back of it like so, and if you're gonna do that, you can actually squeeze it in through the bottom down here this way. So I may actually, if I can get it in shot here, I may actually um, go in from the top, but I'll leave you down here so you can see what I'm doing. If there's room, I'll do it with this, but you can see this just fits around it like that. And actually this guy's a little bit too big. I may have to find my other one. Thought I had the small one, apparently not. Here we go, this should work better. Uh, whoops, I wanna do it, yeah, I wanna do it to the left. Lefty loose, you had to think about it for a second. But you can see, you bend these up, they tighten up on there, and this guy actually may still be too big for this. Oh, like I said, that's one method of doing it. Let me see if I've got one that'll fit it. Having a, having a rough day here, guys. So these are what I was talking about. They actually make something go on the back. You just put your wrench on the back side and uh, take it off that way. Let's see if this fits. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So then all you do is 
take you your ratchet, so three eighths here, and you get on it and make sure you're turning it to the left to loosen it. And make sure you've got it on there nice and tight. All right, so once you break it free with your ratchet, it should spin pretty freely. And then just kind of watch it and spin it off. There we go. I'm going to pull it up through here. You can see you can see what I mean about how it runs down there. See all the oil and how it's running off right on the back side down here. If I zoom in, you guys will see what I'm saying. See how it runs on the back side here and it's dripping down. Maybe even got a little on the floor. Not much. But once that drips out, what we can do is, what we can do is grab our new oil filter. We'll go ahead and open it on screen here for you guys. What you're gonna see about this is that it has a gasket on top. And you can even take this off if you want, but <laughs> it needs the gasket. So make sure on the old one, the gasket came off. You can see it's a Kawasaki filter too. What happens is if that gasket didn't come off and it's still on the engine itself, if you double gasket it, you're gonna leak oil and you're gonna have trouble with your engine. But we saw that we're safe here. So what I'm gonna do, since this spins on sideways, I'm not going to take the trouble of filling it up. Sometimes if they sit upside down like this, you can actually fill the, you can actually fill the canister with oil, but I'm not gonna take the trouble of that. But I am gonna take a little bit of this new oil here and I might just pour a dab on there, just enough that I can dip my fingers in and basically lubricate the little gasket on here. So that way we get a good seal, just like so. See, now let's install this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you guys a shot from the top here now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on the little stem there like so and you guys can just barely see but now i'm just spinning it back on to where it came from and basically you want to get it tight hand tight and then go about three fourths of a turn past hand tight so that's about hand tight and now i'm just going to give it a little more of a turn here so i know that it's seated well it won't leak Yeah, and that right there ought to be good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, set you guys on the back side because before we refill the oil, we gotta put the oil plug cap back on. So that guy's just gonna spin right back on like so. And I am going to clamp down on it with my clamp here we can get a good bite on it and then we're just going to tighten this guy up so we know that it's not leaking ah, and that right there ought to be tight enough that it's not going anywhere so now what i do like to do before i even start pouring, pouring oil in is just a little quick cleanup so if you want to, you can take shop rags, just kind of wipe things down. Like you can see how dirty that stem was here at the beginning versus now. I did go ahead and wipe that down. And uh, basically the idea is that if you're wiping things down, you're gonna notice oil leaks in the future. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of time to clean that up down there, cause that's gonna bother me. And uh, I'll come back and we'll refill the oil. Okay guys, we're getting really, really close here. So. Some things that I didn't mention that uh, can be useful, they're not absolutely necessary, so don't worry if you don't have them. But if you've got a funnel to put in here, this is where the oil cap was, or the dipstick. It just makes pouring it a little bit easier. Like I say, not absolutely necessary. If you're careful, you can get it going just fine, but funnel does help. And then also, if you guys are wanting something besides just shop towels, shop towels will do 
Shop towels will do the trick. Believe me, these things are awesome. I, I use these all the time because I make messes. <laughs> I just tend to. Um, but this stuff right here, Citral, my dad's been using this for years and man, it will cut through grease, oil, you name it. This is awesome stuff for cleaning things up. So I use this a lot. Now that we've got everything cleaned up down there, looking fairly spiffy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our oil. And one thing that I've done here is I've set the dipstick aside, but if you guys forget, it does say on the dipstick, what weight oil, 10W30 there. So I've got this set aside, but basically you can see, you can measure here where you need to add some oil and then where you're full. But since we did an actual oil filter change, we are gonna need a total of 2.2 quarts. If you did not do the filter change and you're just doing an oil change, then you just need 1.9 quarts. So go ahead and I'm gonna break open the Super Tech and you might just double check because uh, the reason why I have two different oils is I did Walmart pickup and they ran out of the Super Tech and actually gave me the uh, Mobile One for the same price as Super Tech. So I wasn't gonna complain since it was a synthetic um, and get it at the same price as Super Tech, why not? But break this open. We'll go ahead and pour it right on in there. Nice, clean oil. Keep an eye on your funnel. Make sure you don't overfill. Spill everywhere. I'm just going to leave that like that while I'm opening up the second. Oh, that one seal came off and everything. So now let's take this dude out. Yeah, it's pretty well spent there. And then second quart. I'll let that one just drain out for a moment as well. And then what I'm gonna do is, just for fun, I believe the book, but I am gonna take my oil dip stick. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna check it real quick. So I wanna show you guys how to check this. So I'll take this out. We'll take the funnel out, being careful, try not to spill any oil that might be left on the bottom there. In fact, we'll take a shop towel and catch the bottom of it one of these jugs for now but now what you how to check this take the dipstick and this is a mistake some folks make drop it in just drop it in don't actually screw it in though you just want to drop it in pull it out and we'll take a look you can see that probably hasn't all drained quite yet because it's still wet here but it looks like that's pretty close to full already so to go ahead and put the oil dipstick in because I know I've got the right amount in there. Then I'm just going to fire this thing up for a few minutes, see if it smokes, um, see if it leaks or anything like that. So we'll do that real quick. So guys, if you like this video, let me know down in the comments. We can definitely do some more on uh, this style mower here. These Husqvarna's, they really haven't changed much over the years. In fact, my dad has got one. He bought a brand new one. He, he got the big boy, the 54 inch. This is just a 48. But uh, really, they're pretty darn close as far as how they run, and they both got the Kawasaki motors, so it's pretty darn close to how you do this procedure. So coming up, I could potentially show you air filter, um, could show you fuel filter, um, a few other little things. Guys, if you're, if you're just interested in the oil change, you can quit the video right here. I'm just going to ramble about some different things. But actually, uh, like I said, I could show you how to change air filter, the oil, um, fuel filter there, sorry. And then another thing, the batteries, which under the seat, another thing that I would recommend to you guys, if you guys are like me and you live in a climate where it gets cold here in Northwest Arkansas, this mower doesn't get used much in the fall and like zero in the winter. Um, what you can do is you can get these little battery tenders that hook up directly. You can see I've got mine run just right here and whenever I got a mow, it's got a quick disconnect and I just unplug this. But literally every time I get done mowing, I plug this guy in, your battery will last you so much longer, so much longer if you do that. And uh, literally this is like 20 bucks right here. So it's kind of a no brainer for me if it makes your batteries last longer. And you can use this on uh, automobiles and everything like that too. So anything that might sit for a while, I definitely recommend these little battery tenders. I love them, love them, couldn't recommend them enough. Um, but another thing I really wanna show you guys is in a different video and I did a review on this, but if you guys like to keep things clean, 
This stuff, right before I did the video, I used this Rebel rubber, vinyl, and plastic on the motor just to kind of clean it up a little. Now, it's not perfect now. Uh, believe me, I understand. But let me tell you, I use this stuff, and I've mowed with this mower twice in really dusty conditions. And look, for instance, up here. See the fins up here, how dirty and dusty they are? I didn't hit it with the Rebel rubber and vinyl. Down here I did. This still looks really clean. So if you guys want things to look clean and look nice, and oh, here's a good example. Look under the seat here. See how dusty and dirty that is? This up here. This stuff is awesome. Absolutely awesome. If you like to keep things clean and uh, you want a product that's going to kind of restore the look of it, kind of back to black, but also dust isn't going to stick to it. Because I've tried a hundred different of these products. This is the only one I've found that, um, that dust doesn't stick to it. So me living on a dirt road and like I say, just being real dusty out here. I, uh, I even use this as tire shine and dust just doesn't stick to my tires. It's awesome. You can see here, look, the, uh, you can see the mud and crap. And right here, look how clean the tires look. So just wanted to share that with you guys in case you're into this sort of stuff. Okay guys, that's about it for this video. I'm gonna get back in the shop where it's a little less windy. That always kills my audio in these videos. But if you guys like the mower stuff, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more of that, um, we'll turn out some more videos on that. Regular viewers, do not worry. We've got some really cool things in line for um, for the Duramax. We're getting started back on that, especially now that winter's over, I can spend some more time in the shop. Uh, there's some things that I've actually already done and just need to shoot the video on for my wife's 2014 Toyota 4Runner. I've been really impressed with that car. I gotta say, I really, really like the 4Runner. I understand why people are really into those. So. We're going to do a few things to it. So guys, stay tuned. We've got a lot of cool things coming down the pipeline. All right, guys, until the next video, take care.